In a previous video, we looked at Microsoft Defender for DNS and talked about how it's sometimes missed by customers and is very easy to turn on and offer some value add in terms of DNS threat reporting, etc. What I learned whilst researching that area is that there are quite a lot of products out there in Azure, either inside of native Azure products, such as Azure Firewall and Log Analytics, or slightly on the peripheral that like we talked about with Microsoft Defender for Cloud and exporting to Sentinel. So what I want to do in this video is try and sort of bring it all together and give a holistic view of the tools that Microsoft offer across all of the Microsoft clouds for DNS security if you're building on top of Azure. The scope of this video is really to drop the breadcrumbs off to these different areas. So it's kind of like a 10,000 foot view just to kind of help you understand the options out there so that when you go into these design discussions, you don't have these gaps where you, you don't know what you don't know. It won't be a super detailed deep dive into these products. I'm not going to demo these products like we did in the previous video with Microsoft Defender for DNS. Now, the focus of this video is internal resolution of names, which your company is not authoritative for. So what I mean by that is inside of your virtual network, You've got machines, they could be Windows servers running parts of your applications, they could be Linux servers, etc., or they could be VDI hosted on Azure, like Azure Virtual Desktop. And it's very often, especially in the VDI scenario, that you're making outbound calls to the internet, going to Bing.com or a third party SaaS provider, or if it's VDI users, they could be browsing any website on the internet, like BBC News or CNN, etc. And what we talked about in the previous video is that the requirement to filter that traffic from a networking perspective to actually control where can my users go to, for example, like can they go to maybe news sites but not gambling sites? Can my servers go to Windows updates but not go to any other website on the internet? Uh, in terms of firewall and that traffic, that's fairly well understood and is part of most designs that I see with customers. And what we said in the last video is what's often missed is, well, before that path kicks in, there's a, a DNS request that happens using whatever DNS servers you have specified. And that, of course, therefore doesn't follow the normal UDR logic and in your internet egress DMZ function. Therefore, what I'm talking about is that reaching inside of your virtual network to outside in terms of DNS. I'm not talking about the internal resolution of domain names that you are authoritative for, for example, like internal.contoso.com or cloud.contoso.com, how you manage them, whether you use uh, AD integrated DNS or Azure DNS private zones or something like Infoblox, etc. That's kind of a separate topic. This is more uh, reaching out to zones which are in a different level of security risk, right? You're inherently reaching out to the DNS hierarchy that exists out there on the internet. And therefore there's a higher chance of there being bad actors and malicious content out there outside of your enterprise perimeter. What I'm also not talking about is you publishing applications within your enterprise out to users on the internet and therefore having to work with public DNS resolution of domain names like you might have contoso.com resolves to a specific public IP or an Azure front door via a CNAME, etc. You're going to be hosting those public names somewhere. And those names could be hosted with any of the registrars out there uh, which offer that function. They could also be hosted on Azure DNS where we offer the ability to host uh, and be your name servers for that function. But again, I'm not talking about the, the security for that. That's a different conversation. I'm talking about this internal resolution uh, and managing the security and visibility of these DNS requests that go out of your, your perimeter. So let's briefly cover what I highlighted on the Microsoft Defender video. And that was if you have something in your VNet, for example, a custom DNS server, or it could be a VNet that's directly talking to Azure DNS for public resolution, going to this 168 address. Then we have this additional toggle that's very easy to turn on for public resolution via Azure DNS called Microsoft Defender for DNS. 
And ultimately what we demonstrated in the last video was if you turn this on and you do the integration properly with Azure Sentinel or your internal SIEM solution, you're going to get those automated alerts and incidents. And that's ultimately going to come back to some sort of security operations center within your business. Okay, so that's that's one way of addressing the security side of DNS. You're looking for malicious DNS requests, looking for certain DNS tunneling attacks, and then also having those alerts and incidents integrated in a way which lets you actually act upon them rather than just getting overwhelmed with the data. Let's stick with this angle of DNS requests assessment in terms of, is it a security risk? Let's stick with this angle first, and then we'll come on to, hey, I want to audit my DNS request, which is another angle for DNS security. So let's stick with the, the threat analysis first. Are there any other products and ways in which you could do this on Azure? Uh, and the answer is yes. So the first one is, if you're running your DNS on top of Active Directory, so Windows Server, and you're doing AD integrated DNS, then as part of the Microsoft Defender portfolio, we have something called Defender for Identity. So if you set this up and you integrate it with your Windows servers, then part of what we can do using an agent-based system that runs on that virtual machine is we can inspect and look at the DNS resolution that's occurring kind of, let's say, on the source, so on, on the custom DNS server itself, that IaaS virtual machine that you're running. So here's the page here for network name resolution as part of the Defender for Identity portfolio. And when you drill into the value proposition here, you start to look at, okay, there's some, there's some particular type of data and threats that this will attempt to mitigate. I haven't done the full sort of value proposition assessment of, okay, well, I've got the Defender for Identity angle here with network name resolution functionality versus Microsoft Defender for DNS. My first impression is it's not a purely apples to apples comparison. Therefore, the takeaway here would be when you're looking at DNS security, if you're a Windows customer, my initial impression is that there is value in running both Defender for Identity, leveraging this DNS threat analysis here on the source DNS server, and also turning on Microsoft Defender for DNS if you're sending your request for public name resolution to Azure DNS, which is probably the most likely configuration. And ultimately, again, you would integrate that in the same way, and ultimately it would get to your, your SOC. There is another angle here when it comes to DNS threat analysis, and that's to take it in a layer even further. So if our first approach was do it with Defender for DNS inside of the Microsoft DNS uh, managed service for DNS resolution. Our second approach was do it on the custom DNS server. The third approach here is do it on the source, do it on the actual client VM that's initiating the DNS request. So let, let's think about how we can look inside of the operating system. And as that DNS request is dropped on the wire before it even leaves the virtual machine, well, we know that if you've got the Microsoft management agent installed, then that's going to be reporting things to log analytics. And one of the things I learned uh, as part of research in this area is we do have a solution called DNS analytics that is in preview. And again, when you start to look through the value proposition here, there is some overlap. You see here resolving malicious domain names. So that will overlap with some of the bits that Microsoft Defender for Cloud offers in terms of malicious domain name reporting in terms of DNS requests. Okay, so we understand that effectively there, there are three native touch points that we can use to provide that DNS security and threat analysis. Of course, if you're using a third-party product for DNS resolution here, like Infoblox, there's going to be a fourth sort of non-Microsoft native touch point where I'm sure they offer their own DNS resolution security options. Okay, let's talk about the second area, which is I know that I'm assessing my requests and I'll get alerts when something strange is happening, but what about if I've got a requirement to audit all of the requests? And this again is a fairly common, especially in regulated industries, you want to have a ability to go back in time 
look at DNS requests from specific IPs for regulatory reasons. So what are our touch point options in terms of actually logging every DNS request? So let's work in the same order. Microsoft Defender for Cloud that runs on top of this Azure DNS solution today isn't going to let you log every DNS request. Microsoft Defender for Cloud and Defender for DNS, that's just addressing the threat analysis, not the DNS login. Okay. The next touch point would be, well, yes, of course, you could log every DNS request that goes through your custom DNS server, but that would be happening inside of the operating system. So actually using that data, that could be a bit tricky. And then as we saw a second ago, this ability to use the log analytics export from the client with DNS analytics, that does indeed have the ability to log all of your DNS requests as it's shown here. And you, you can then use standard queries to go in and find the data you wanted. So that would be one option. There's also a fourth option here, which is, are you using Azure Firewall? Azure Firewall has this ability to act as a DNS proxy, which means configure all of your clients and your spoke VNets to send their DNS requests to Azure Firewall. And it will proxy them either straight to Azure DNS or to your custom DNS server. And one of its abilities is to actually log every DNS request. And there's a great blog here by one of my colleagues, Ashish Kapila, on doing exactly this. It's kind of the value proposition, getting that visibility into your DNS requests by pushing it through Azure Firewall. This is a great step-by-step -step guide. And ultimately what it builds up to is showing you the log format and showing you how to get that data using this particular custo query. And really the icing on the cake is there's a video here by the Azure Firewall team a demo in here by Ashish himself, where we actually demo this feature and there's a very detailed in-depth walkthrough here. And of course, because the data is sitting there, you can use workbooks to skin that. And this is Ashish demo in an area where you can, um, you can see sort of top talkers, et cetera, in terms of who's sent the most DNS request in that respect there's overlap with the DNS analytics solution, which takes a more client-based approach. You can see some of the metrics you get out here in terms of listing IPs, et cetera. It's kind of in the, in the similar vein to the Azure DNS proxy dashboard. Okay, let's try and wrap this up. We talked about DNS security in Azure through the lens of resolving external FQDNs from inside of our enterprise perimeter. We talked about two main angles to the security considerations. Number one, the threat analysis of the requests themselves, are they healthy requests or not? We then talked about a second angle of, okay, how do I log those requests from all of my internal endpoints to external endpoints, either for auditing or regulation purposes? And then we talked about how in a typical design, there's effectively four touch points where we can think about addressing those two different angles. Number one is on the public DNS provider themselves. In this case, a cloud DNS solution, Azure DNS provided by Microsoft. Number two, inside of my custom DNS servers that I'm running in my VNet, typically as IaaS virtual machines, could be Windows DNS with Active Directory integration, could be third party. The third touch point is, am I running a network firewall? Could be Azure Firewall, could be a third party appliance that has the ability to do things with DNS requests. And then the fourth touch point was, okay, well, could I address this from the actual client themselves from the source virtual machine that's actually making the DNS request? So when I look across those two different angles and those four different touch points, we see a matrix of which touch points can address which angle. And to summarize that, on the threat analysis side, we talked about how we can use Microsoft Defender for DNS, part of Defender for Cloud, on top of Azure DNS to very easily turn that on and get the threat analysis. We talked about Defender for Identity being applicable if these are Windows custom DNS servers. And then we talked about this preview solution called DNS Analytics, which takes a more client-based approach if your machines are logged into a central log analytics workspace. On the second angle, the login and auditing side, 
Today, Azure DNS doesn't allow you to log the DNS requests you put through it. Therefore, we need to look to a, another solution. We talked about how, yes, we can get logs out of the inside of our custom DNS server, but that would be from inside of the operating system. So you're working with system logs, etc. It's not what I would class as cloud native. And then we wrapped up the audit inside with these concrete options of Azure Firewall DNS Proxy offering a very elegant way of pulling those logs out. That's where I linked to that demo by the product team, which shows the standards based uh, custom approach to getting those logs out. And also on the login side, if you went with a DNS analytics approach, that would also offer a ability to pull the logs out using standard queries against a log analytics workspace. What would I do if I was designing my greenfield DNS on Azure or looking to do a health check on my existing DNS in terms of security? Well, probably you are forwarding to Azure DNS for your public queries. Therefore, I turn on Microsoft Defender for Cloud for DNS because that seems like a no brainer to me. If you're running Windows here as your DNS server in the VNet, then again, turning on Defender for Identity, looking at the functionality that provides around network name resolution security seems like a easy win for me. If I'm an Azure Firewall customer, then I would seriously look at the DNS proxy function. If I've got that requirement to log the DNS requests from all of my users, I think today I would pause on the DNS analytics solution because it's in preview. So I wouldn't be looking to rely upon that for a production grade system at this time. However, I think there is value in this service down the line, especially if you're not an Azure Firewall customer or you are not a Windows integrated DNS customer. If you still want an Azure native way of being able to query all of the DNS requests that were made from inside of your network to outside. So I hope you found that whirlwind tour of DNS security on Azure useful and hopefully it's prompted you to do some further research. I'd love to hear your feedback. There's probably things on the DNS security side we haven't talked about so please let us know what have we missed and I'd love to know how you've addressed these concerns in your cloud network design. So again please drop the feedback below and I'll talk to you in the next one.